Ideas don't determine who's right. Power determines who's right. And I have the power. Okay, it is a brand new era for Call of Duty, and these two men are responsible for it. Mike, Glenn, how are you guys feeling? How's your E3 going? That's busy, man. I feel like a hamster on a wheel right now, but it couldn't be more excited to talk about Advanced Warfare. Well, he he's, looks like a hamster on a wheel. Yeah, no, uh, we've been having a we've been having a great E3. I mean, uh, I I couldn't have asked for anything better than it's been going. Fantastic. I mean, the reveals happened, but the big stage was obviously the Microsoft, the intro to Microsoft. Were you guys there? What was the feedback? How did you feel seeing that on stage? I gotta tell you, for three years for Sledgehammer Games to develop this game, for three years to be the new lead studio, and to open E3 2014 with Microsoft with our opening level of the game, I couldn't be more proud, couldn't be more proud of the game, the team, I mean, it was just, I don't know, all pride and adrenaline and all that good stuff. Yeah, well, he, he said it. I mean, uh, we, were, we were proud of the team. I mean, they've worked really, really hard. And uh, it's just wonderful to see it up there and it sounded great. And, uh, and then you hear the, uh, the, the crowd, yeah. right? And, uh, and they oohed and aahed right at the right time, right when we expected, we hoped. Well, how do you guys feel being in the driver's seat now? I mean, this is the big thing. You're now the third studio in this, this franchise, and you're trying to progress the franchise so far now, moving away from what we've experienced over the last few years. Is it that dual sort of pressure of being the main guys now and also trying in something entirely new for Call of Duty? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a pressure. And, and believe it or not, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, right? Because uh, we do this truly for the fans we really want to do something that's so high quality and uh we call ourselves entertainers so there's a pressure that you put on yourself but um, yeah to be in the driver's seat sometimes i don't think of it that way but um yeah i, I mean, we know that there's a pressure out there and uh but we'll just focus on the game that's what we've been doing yeah, yeah i mean you think about you spend your whole life building up to something really special right imagine you're an athlete and you're now at the moment, like you're standing on the shoulders of greatness of the team before you with Infinity Ward and Treyarch, but you're going, put me in coach. And then you get your chance and you're giving it 110%. And that's exactly what we're doing with Sledgehammer Games. I love the fact that you guys have that no comp compromise sort of attitude with this because this is going to be a very story driven game, which previous Call of Duty's have been, but you guys have the pedigree now of doing something slightly different. And just one interesting sort of touch upon that. And has that been your main focus from the very, from day one about a single character and his progress through this advanced war. Yeah, with three years to focus, we've had more time. It's been unprecedented, really. And so not only focusing on new tech and doing everything you saw to deliver on the visuals and audio of the game, but to deliver a fantastic and compelling story. I mean, we're storytellers. We love great stories in film and TV. And to bring that to Call of Duty, we saw a real opportunity. I was going to say. Well, I was going to say we ha we have been working on the story for uh, over two and a half years, and yes, it is a it, it's one of those things that we've been um, really putting our heart and soul into, and uh, we want to tell a great story. We believe that the video game uh, medium is the next medium to tell a great story, and uh, you know we've got some really compelling characters, uh, and just like we brought in uh, Kevin Spacey, you know, to to help highlight the fact that we've got some some great dialogue. And how, how do you approach that in the game space during the single player campaign? Is it those sort of story beats that happen within the cutscenes, within the scenes between uh, the actual campaign itself? How, how do we see that? Uh, we try and tell a story throughout the whole game. Now, uh, we, we are doing some new things. You know, traditionally, uh, a lot of the, uh, the missions are given to you in the, the, the cutscenes as well. And you find out that you're only telling the story for about 15 seconds. We're putting the mission briefs and that sort of thing in game. And we're tra telling some of the story in the, uh, in the movies up front. But we are trying to tell, we are telling a lot of that story within the game. And uh, you'll see it. I, I saw during the um, during the reveal event, you guys sort of touched upon Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, House of Cards, as that idea by uh, player and character progression, really. And I want to know what sort of heart are you bringing to the advanced warfare? I mean, how are we seeing? Who are we seeing? And what is their story? Yeah, this is the, really the story of Private Mitchell and his ten-year career in the military, and you know the, all those that you talk about, Game of Thrones, like it's about getting attached emotionally to that character. So we want to hold you in one character's story and then really make you feel pain and loss and success and 
and camaraderie and all of those feelings that will really make that impactful for you as a player when some really incredible things happen throughout the campaign. And with the Axel, with the Axel Skeleton, what sort of new challenges does that bring to the battlefield in terms of design and gameplay? Well, one of the, the big things from the exoskeleton is the boost jump. And so right away, you're talking about verticality. And you have to design your levels completely different. And that's going to give it a different feel. But on top of that, you know, we've got cloak, we've got the exo grapple, we have mag gloves, and, you know, a whole bunch of new things. And, and, and then we've got, we've got an upgrading system. So um, during each level, you're going to be able to get some points. You earn the points. At the end of the level, you can upgrade your XO. And uh, do I want to be faster? Do I want to reload faster? What do, do I want to be stronger? So um, you, you can have that sort of choice. And you, you sort of said before that you didn't want people just to play through the campaign once, and that's them. You, you want something that will involve people. So I'm just interested to know with those skills, with those perks, is that something that you can carry on to maybe like a game plus or something like that to allow people to go back into the campaign and play slightly different from the off? Yeah, I mean, look, we've put a ton of time into all three modes of the game, single player and co-op and multiplayer, and we want people to enjoy all of it. There's been a tremendous amount of push to make each one of them great. So everything from replayability in the story mode through things like the upgrade system to two new reward systems that you can actually transfer your sort of progress and, and accomplishments from one mode to the other. We've got a lot of ways to really help you enjoy the entire game that is Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Now I, I am going to touch upon multiplayer because obviously the inclusion of exoskeletons changes the battlefield somewhat. Um, how are you guys entering that fray? Well, um, you know we're not talking about uh, multiplayer that much. Well, not at all, really, except that we can say that the exoskeleton uh, does go across the whole game. So if you can imagine what we do in single player, eh, just use your imagination. How did you sell this to Kevin Spacey? <laughs> well, Kevin Spacey, you know, the story was written for Kevin in mind. I mean, really from day one, and the narrative was built around him as Jonathan Irons. And then the chance for Activision to say, okay, if that's the character, go get him, bring him on board. That was amazing for us. And really, Call of Duty as a place for him to embrace new fans. I mean, he's cutting edge, right, with Netflix and with Casa Cards. Like, he's willing to take some chances to reach new fans. And so, awesome opportunity for best-in-class Hollywood performance to come to Call of Duty for everybody. He's been excited. It's been a pleasure to work with him. It's really been great for the game. Is this being a case you guys got them in, green screened them and stuff like that um, prior to that everything else? I mean, how, how, when did that process happen? No, I mean, we have, we have written the scripts and, uh, and, and the story, and, um, and, and he's been in there. He's, it's not green screen, it's performance capture. So he's in a full suit, and he's got the camera on, and he's got sensors on his face, and they are acting uh, just like they would in, uh, you know, in, in Hollywood on a set there. Matter of fact, we are... We're sharing the set with, uh, with Avatar 2, so it's that sort of um, technology that's being used. And, um, uh, you know, he comes on and he'll add to the script, and he'll add to the dialogue, which has been, you know, really almost magical for us, you know? That's actually what I was going to touch upon. I mean, I would imagine Kevin Spacey would be the type of person, actor, that injects maybe certain elements to his character that you guys didn't expect. What was that collaboration process like? Yeah, I mean, he's a pro's pro. He really is. And he came in and really wanted to understand all of Jonathan Irons. And with that, he's able to sort of lift the performance of the cast around him. And we've got a great cast. We've got Troy Baker, as you know, and we've got a really great um, addition of a woman as a tier one operator. And we've got a number of other cast members. And they all came together. And he not only elevated the idea of Jonathan Irons, but sort of the cast performance around him. Yeah, one of the things that... Uh he came in, he said, I'm a detective. I want to know everything I can about that character. And I, you know, I want to know what he drinks, what he does. And so uh, he actually made us go back. I mean, he, he didn't make us, but we wrote even more backstory because we wanted to show him uh, you know, what the character was about so he could delve into it even more. With going from modern to advanced warfare, was that just the logical step for the series? Was that something you guys interjected and was very interesting, given that we've got the exoskeletons to give that different element to Call of Duty? You know, um, I, I think back like three years ago, I think it was sort of a mutual decision sitting down with the, uh, uh, the powers that be at, at, at headquarters and, uh, and talking about what would be the best thing. And, and, and somehow we landed on about 45 to 50 years in the future. 
together, you know, yeah. And we saw during the uh, the gameplay demo, like the, like the ability to rip car doors off, use yeah. the shields, absolutely awesome stuff. Is that stuff we'll see implemented more during the campaign, like unique little ideas like that? Absolutely. I mean, the heart of soul is the exoskeleton, and there are things that, that you're going to be able to do throughout the campaign. You're going to have things like boost, jump, and climb, and grapple, and strength, and speed. You're going to have off the controller um, changes that are with you all the time, like exo dodge and slam. You're going to have abilities like overdrive. I mean. It's going to be a game changer throughout the campaign, and as Glenn mentioned earlier, co-op and multiplayer as well. You guys just making Call of Duty the RPG? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're making Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, yeah. and uh, Not that speed. it is. Uh, no, we call it the most ambitious sort of game we've ever had a chance to build, and we're pretty proud of where it's going. No, I mean we uh, we're conscious enough to know uh, that it's. There is a certain pace that is uh, Call of Duty. I mean, we've we've got a pedigree in, uh, in in adventure games. This isn't, but it's got it's got other elements in it. That's for sure. No, the guy, the DNA of Dead Space can be seen with the, with with the player hut and the way you've designed the exoskeleton and stuff like that. I just wanted to know exactly was that almost like a, a little nod to the heritage of all? I mean, where did that come in? Well, I think you know for us. We're really proud of what we did on Dead Space as the creators, the original creators of Dead Space. We couldn't be more proud of the work we did on Modern Warfare 3. And so to take all of those learnings, right, about pace and mood from Dead Space and epic Call of Duty moments and great combat from MW3 and marrying them together in Advanced Warfare, absolutely, we are going to make this something pretty special and it's going to have the sledgehammer stamp on it. I was going to ask, um, do you guys in Infinity Ward and Treyarch have little competitions online at all? Do you guys have like inter-studio plays and who's winning? <laughs> well, yeah, we absolutely partner well and collaborate with those guys. We share knowledge, but uh, for MP playtest, absolutely. We've got some guys in the studio I'd put up against anyone in the company, frankly. <laughs> That's your land right down there, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not one of them. Um, and I'm not sure you are either, but uh, yeah, we got some great guys. And you know, we know um, Mark Lomney is a good friend. We're gonna go out to dinner with him. And you know, we spend time with uh, uh, the different different people in Call of Duty. I mean, yeah, yeah it's sort of a, a big camaraderie, yeah. Well, just sort of ask, cool, nice. So, get E3 week over with. You managed to actually escape this room. What's the roadmap for the next two, three months down the line? Yeah. Well, you know, look, we are so close and we couldn't be more proud. And you know, the whole team is heads down. Glenn, myself, and everybody at Sledgehammer Games, everybody working on this game, we got one goal. Get it over the goal line in November. And then maybe we'll have a moment to take a deep breath and sort of hopefully celebrate with fans and then figure out what's next. But between now and then, it's a pedal to the metal, you know, foot to the floor sort of race to deliver just the highest quality, most ambitious game that we can create. No stress. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, 200 people eating together every night and, uh, yeah. Um, but this is what we do, right? Uh, we love this and uh, we put in the time and the energy because we want quality and we want to really deliver something great. Gentlemen, Kuzulek Sang, thank you so much indeed for taking the time to talk to us. Thank All the best. Time. Thank you very much. We do appreciate it. Oh.